Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Vaughn Henshaw. Appreciate you all tuning into my show today. Today, I want to talk about disability, loneliness, and rejection. This is for you guys who subscribe to my YouTube channels. Those of you that face a disability like I do. I have faced eoscapula, humeral, muscular dystrophy, and COPD, and PTSD brought on by the muscular dystrophy that I have battled now for 37 years. With the muscular dystrophy, there's no cure, there's no medication, there's no therapy, and nothing that can do to cure it, stop it, reverse it, or slow it down. For the past 37 years, I have uh, watched many of my friends die with it, and I've watched my own body, muscles, vanish, disappear. Some doctors that I've talked to and some in the medical field call this the slowest cancer on earth. And there's no cure for it. So that's part of my battles. With that, I was diagnosed in 1984, October of 84, and then in the summer of 2009, I was diagnosed with COPD symptoms. I've never really smoked much to count. I've smoked a little bit, not anything to count. The COPD I've got comes from the loss of muscling around my lungs. And then with the financial hardships of not being able to work, living on a disability check. Right now, I live on $770 a month. It's not a lot. So, today's show, however, I want to talk about the aspect of romantic relationships. I've loved seven w women in my life. I've married four of those women. We've had four preachers to mumble words over us. And they promised to stay with me till death do us part. But they all left. So most of my life, since I've been 14 years old, I'm now 50 years old. I've dealt a lot with loneliness and rejection. Let's talk about that. Some disabled people are blessed enough to find someone to truly love them and to stay with them. That's the evidence of true love, if they stay. No matter what the hardship, no matter what the difficulty, no matter what the obstacle or opposition, if someone truly loves you, they're going to stay with you through thick and thin, through the ups and downs, through the mountains and the valleys, through it all, because they love you as a person, not just what they can get out of you or what you can do for them or whatever the case might be. Some people are fortunate enough to find someone that truly loves them and they stay with them. My older brother William died with muscular dystrophy and diabetes in April of 2009. 
46 years old. He had a wonderful wife. She stayed with him till he passed away. She truly loved him. That's the evidence. Many of us that are disabled do not have that kind of blessing in our lives. And it makes our lives very lonely and hard. You know, I read a study many years ago when I was in college, one of my psychology classes. We were talking about loneliness, and how different people deal with that. A lot of people deal with it through alcohol and drugs illicit sex and gambling, whatever it is to kill that pain, to numb that deep rooted pain in the heart of loneliness. I've done it all these years without drugs, without alcohol. I've just faced it, swallowed it, tried to go on living my life. But I read this story, this research article, what it was, about these little babies, and I think it was in Poland or somewhere, many, many years ago during a war in that particular country. These babies were born and for some reason their parents had been killed or whatnot. And they were all in this one war, this one unit, in this pediatric portion of the hospital. And they noticed the babies that did not receive physical touch, love, they died quicker than the other babies. I don't guess there was enough nurses to go around to hold all of the babies or whatever. And I may be getting this story off, but it's the gist of this. We as human beings long for that physical touch. We crave that physical touch of another human being. We need it. Having a dog or a cat or a pet, that's all right. But we need that human touch in order to survive. That's why they say that no man is an island unto himself. We need each other. We live in a community. Or it is not here to live for ourselves. Although in my particular situation, that's what I've been forced to do more often than not. So those disabled people, you guys that are disabled, that have a partner, you're blessed. If they're faithful to you, loyal, honest, and truly love you, you're blessed. I hope you know how blessed you are. Those of us that do not have that, we're at the mercy of nurses. I've got home health nurses that come in six hours a day. They help me, they take care of me, they cook, they clean, they do my laundry, they do my shopping, they do all that. but I still sleep alone in my bed every night. It's hard, it's not easy. So those of you that, those of you that are fortunate enough to have someone, a partner, you're blessed. I remember years ago, going to a funeral of a young man. He was not disabled, he was only 20, he was in college, 21 maybe. 
his girlfriend, I think they've been going together, excuse me, for about three years. She'd broken up with him. And uh, broke his heart. And he shot himself and killed himself. That's how some people deal with the loneliness and rejection. Those of us that choose to live and endure it, that's who this video is for today. There's a story told of a man in a wheelchair, 40 years old, met this lady, fell in love with her, they got married. Six years later, she found a new boyfriend, kicked him out. And the rejection of that man dealt with ran so deep. that he never did really talk about it much. But if you knew him, you could tell that his life, his mentality was never the same ever again. He lost a spark about him. He lost a lot of his joy. He lost a lot of his happiness. He never did fully recover from that. Because what you understand here, when a disabled person marries another individual, that person not only becomes their husband or wife, partner, friend, but they become their caregiver. So when a disabled person loses a spouse like that, when they leave, they lose it all. They lose their spouse, friend, lover, and caregiver. The, the, the multiple faceted rejection and that one breakup, it does something to your mind that's unexplainable, it's irreprehensible, it's unimaginable. The levels of deep rooted deep-seated, heart-wrenching pain that goes on inside the heart of the disabled person that has just been thrown away like a piece of trash. I've been thrown away four times. I know exactly what it feels like. Rejection. There's another story told about loneliness. This man in a wheelchair, I'm not sure his exact disability, but the story is told about him where he was so lonely, he would drive to the cemetery in his town. And in that cemetery, evidently, they had a, a huge pond where ducks and geese, blue herons, birds of all kinds, I'm assuming, would flock and they would swim on that pond and sit beside the water and whatnot. And the caretakers of that cemetery 
told this story about this young man, that he was so lonely, the only solace, the only contentment, the only peace, comfort that he could find on earth. going to that cemetery watching those ducks and geese and swans swim on that pond. One day one of the caretakers walked up to the man's van and said I don't mean to be nosy but I see you here almost every day. mind telling me your story? And the young man told him why he was in a wheelchair and I forgot why. And he said that he couldn't get a woman to go out to the movies with him, to go out to McDonald's to eat a burger with him. He was bold enough to ask him he had confidence. But they all rejected him, turned him down, and left him to wallow in that dark cesspool of loneliness. Loneliness and rejection often go hand in hand. It's a double edged sword. It cuts coming and going. Loneliness and rejection is like a dark, bottomless pit that many never find their footing in. Many never recover. Many die in that pit of loneliness and rejection. Those of us that don't die physically, we die other ways. Not seen by the natural eye, not heard by the ears, not felt with a touch, but part of us die. We lose hope on so many levels, but on this level we lose all hope of ever finding a man or a woman to really, truly, genuinely love and care about and like us enough to live with us, settle down with us, and all of that. And that's why that I get amused at people sometimes who attempt to try to act like they know what I'm going through, how I feel being disabled. And they'll, at that point, they'll begin to tell me all of their ailments and, and pains and as if their issues, and they're healthy more or less, as if their issues are anywhere compared to mine. They're healthy. They're able to work. They have spouses, children, good jobs. They can do whatever the hell they want to do. Go where the hell they want to go. I'm not a fan of people. People have turned me into the monster that I am. People have made me the man that I am today, for good or worse.
and I'll be 51 next month. And uh, the older I get, the more I realize why they say that dog is a man's best friend. I no longer even have a thought of trying to find a woman to love me. That seems like the another life to me. I no longer have that desire or thought. I've given up all hope on that. Women and men. Women are shallow superficial we live in a nation here in america where it seems as if if you're a man if you're not muscled and drive a muscle car and make a lot of money then the women are just not interested in you whatsoever And maybe they have a point. Maybe I don't have anything to offer a woman at all. Maybe I've been deluded and delusional all these years, thinking that I had something to offer a woman. No, I don't have muscles, money, muscle cars. What I do have, though, is a good heart. A lot of love. I'm that man when I was with women. And they'll tell you, they're not going to lie to you, they'll tell you. I wrote them the poetry. I'm a musician, so I wrote them songs, love songs, just to them, sung those love songs to them. I helped with the housework as much as I could from my wheelchair to the dishes, sweep, mop, took out the trash if I could, if it wasn't too heavy. But Perhaps that's not enough. Perhaps all of that would not have been good enough for any woman. Just maybe I was living a fool's dream all these years, thinking that I truly did have something to offer to a woman, when in fact, for women, showed me I evidently did not have anything to offer to a woman. So here I am today, disabled, my disabilities getting much worse now. The muscular dystrophy that I have, it gets worse and worse. It doesn't slow down, doesn't stop. There's no cure, no medicine, no therapy. So I deal with this alone. When I was a younger man, I was really hoping, praying, that at this stage in my life, I would have found a woman that would have truly, sincerely loved me, stayed with me. Didn't happen. So now, here we are, facing all this alone. So, what do you do? A lot of people, a lot of men I know that are disabled, they go through prostitutes, escorts, strippers. I talk to them. 
just leaves them empty. It's nothing, nothing substantial. It's a temporary band-aid on a bullet wound. That's all that is. Because the prostitutes and the escorts and the strippers, they don't love them either. So what's the point of wasting your money on that? Right? So I encourage you today, guys, if you're disabled and alone and lonely, have dealt with or are dealing with rejection, you're not alone. There are others of us out here too who are dealing with the same shit. One hour at a time. If you like my channel, hit subscribe. That's all I've got. Y'all take care.